Ken Berry said it brilliantly yesterday. He said, you know, maybe we just need to rename type 2 diabetes to carbohydrate intoxicity syndrome. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, call yeah. it a glucose toxic or a glucotoxicity. Yeah. Yeah, that's a much more accurate view. Yeah. Much, in fact, I think us putting together type 1 and type 2 in the same family of diabetes was the first problem. They should not be considered similar pathologies. They are totally different. The fact that they have one thing in common, namely the high glucose, why should that then lead us to considering that they should have similar treatments? They are really diseases of total opposites. And in this massive Venn diagram, the one single touch point is the high glucose. To hell with all of the other differences, which are extreme different ends. One is obese, one is very lean, one is high insulin, one is a total deficiency of insulin. One cannot, one cannot burn fat, the other can't stop burning fat. They're exact opposites. Yeah. The one thing they have high glucose and that's the reason we use to justify the treatments? No, it doesn't make sense. As simple to start off with as reducing the carbs? That's a great question. Yes, yes it is. Um, now, that there, there are, this is a multifaceted approach. I, I um, often will discuss an insulin sensitizing journey. One way I've learned to, to discuss it is a fat cell shrinking journey. Because mm -hmm. as you touch on in the book, it's not the mass of fat that matters most. It's the size of each individual fat cell. So that's how we should look at it. I think that helps us understand the real origins here in a chronic insulin resistant state. It's not as much a matter of losing fat, although that will be the obvious effect. It's that you look at each, you imagine each fat cell and think, I need to shrink that. There are two primary ways to do that, low calorie and low insulin. Both of those will work. This is why you can take someone who adopts a vegan diet, a profoundly nutrient deficient way of living life and eating, and they can reverse, they can improve their type two diabetes and their insulin resistance because they've cut their calories so much. Yep. They're essentially just going into this weird fast, yep. eventually leading to nutrient um, deficiencies. Alternatively, you have a low insulin approach. Now, both of those will work. The reason I am so heavy handed about the insulin lowering approach is because we see what happens if a person's fat cell shrinking journey starts with the low calorie step, they will very in, in short order take that foot back. Yes. They will go right back to where they started because if you cut calories, but your insulin is still elevated and that hasn't been addressed, insulin is going to want to be telling all calories in the blood. Insulin abhors energy not being stored in a cell. And so its thematic effect from top to bottom will be to tell nutrients to be stored and locked away in cells. That works perfectly fine for liver, which has an abundant energy supply. Fat cells have an abundant energy supply. Even muscle cells have a lot of gly glycogen and fat. The brain has no capacity to store energy. Thus, it must constantly rely on the energy that comes from the blood. So if insulin's high, but calories coming in is down, yep. then the overall nutrient availability in the blood has gone down. David Ludwig has shown this. Total energy availability in a high insulin state goes down. The brain senses this relative reduction in energy in the blood, whether it's glucose or fats or whatever it would want to be sensing, ketones. It will then say, well, we need to eat because energy is going down. Little knowing that the fat cells, the liver, the muscle, they're all perfectly fed. Can't get to it. Yes, it's just it doesn't know. It can only rely on the energy in the blood, and thus its solution to this is hunger. Yeah. And so that is why every approach that starts with eat less, exercise more, which is the perfect manifestation of the, the, the calorie-based view, which again is real, it works. If you cut calories, it will work. The reason I cannot embrace that view, however, is because... As I said, that approach leads to hunger. Yeah. And so rather than doom yourself to failure yeah. and immediately invite misery by yeah. cutting calories yeah. but not addressing your insulin, flip those around. Yeah. Let your calories be what they may. And if you bring down your insulin, now you will increase your metabolic rate by two to 300 calories a day. You'll start making ketones, which will satiate the brain and the brain will be thinking, hey, we're all good here. There's plenty of energy. Yep. Let's maybe stop eating and you'll finally be burning all the fat that you've been storing. Yeah.